Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Queensland South East is on a severe weather alert. The state could be lashed by similar conditions to a killer storm in May last year. A low pressure trough is intensifying. It's expected to bring heavy rain and damaging winds by tomorrow morning. Residents in flood prone suburbs have been told to prepare for flash flooding. Coastal areas are expected to be hit the hardest when the superstorm arrives. There's a, a, a quite a severe uh, low pressure system developing over the, over southeast Queensland, northeast New South Wales, over the next 24 hours. Around 250 millimetres of rainfall is expected in coastal areas, as well as wind gusts of up to 90 kilometres per hour. Authorities are warning people to stay out of the water, with a predicted king tide and large swells. Also, any unnecessary road travel and outdoor activities should be postponed. It's better to be safe than sorry with weather and particularly bad weather conditions. SES crews are on standby and 40,000 free sandbags are available at depots in Dara, Morningside, Newmarket and Zilmia. The most important thing is for people to get prepared now and to stay safe uh, when the event hits. Drivers are reminded, if it's flooded, forget it. And the RSPCA is advising people to keep their animals in safe and secure environments when leaving them at home alone. Emily Helverson, QUT News. Acting Premier Jackie Trad has turned the first sod on a $170 million office tower in Fortitude Valley. The latest inner city development comes as a leading economist warns the commercial and residential market is oversaturated. Another crane, another development. Fortitude Valley is now home to the largest developmental boom in Brisbane's history. The latest is this consolidation properties project at 900 Ann Street. The Deputy Premier getting her feet dirty turning the first sod. Having 1,700 workers in this building, um, using facilities, uh, restaurants uh, in this location will mean an enormous amount to the local economy. It's set to produce more than 1,300 local construction jobs in the next two years. Once seen as unlivable, the valley mirrors other rising suburbs such as West End, but it comes at a cost, says a leading Queensland economist. So the, the moment we're certainly approaching saturation in the Brisbane apartment market. The, we've had a lot of supply come on and there's a lot of questions as to where the demand is going to come from from tenants in future years. While a building boom is great for the long term, it's perhaps a hindrance to the locals within the area who are having their parking spots taken by tradies. But there are options. Things that can be done to deal with it could be um, times that, the, uh, that um, construction trucks are allowed access um, and just really monitoring resident availability for car parks. Construction is expected to be finished in 2018. Caden Howison, QT News. Believe it or not, South East Queensland is today five hours closer to Canada. A new direct international flight could boost tourism and economic relationships. The wheels of Air Canada flight AC035 touched down in Brisbane this morning, but this was no ordinary commercial shuttle. A traditional welcoming ceremony marked the first direct daily flight between Brisbane and Vancouver. A lot of Canadians fly in through Sydney, um, but they really want to come up to, up to uh, Gold Coast. Sunshine Coast and up into far north Queensland to get up to Cairns and further. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner will carry passengers in luxury and those on board the inaugural flight were excited about the new route. The direct flight rather than 30 hour odyssey is well, well looked forward awesome. to. Awesome, it's Brisbane. fantastic because uh, I live in Townsville so it's really good for us. The Canadians brought their own snow globe. Our tourism minister got into the spirit. <laughs> But what's so exciting for me is that we're going to see an additional 180,000 people travelling between Vancouver and Brisbane. The daily direct flights from Canada to Brisbane are a boon for the Queensland economy and Tourism Minister Kate Jones says that they'll inject an additional $56 million. China Eastern Airlines will also begin direct daily flights from Brisbane to Shanghai in November. Bryce Heaton, QUT News. It's the halfway mark in the federal election campaign. Today, Bill Shorten's been under pressure over his stance on business tax, while Malcolm Turnbull has come to the rescue of a former minister facing the loss of his seat. The Prime Minister was campaigning in Adelaide Hills, seat of Mayo, currently held by Liberal Jamie Briggs. The dumped minister's reputation took a battering over his behaviour on an overseas trip. 
And the candidate for Nick Xenophon's independent party is considered a major chance to upset him. Today, Mr Turnbull says Briggs' re-election is crucial for a coalition win. The only way to secure a continuation of a stable coalition government and the delivery of our clear economic plan for jobs and growth is to vote for the coalition. The opposition leader was out on the hustings in northern Tasmania today and generally received a warm welcome from voters. In a state where tourism is a major industry, Mr Shorten promised $44 million for a tourism infrastructure fund. He was questioned about supporting tax cuts in Parliament five years ago, which he now believes are useless. First of all, you can only give tax cuts when you can afford them. Now the circumstances are quite different between 2011 and now. He says the federal budget deficit has tripled. More revenue cuts will put Australia's credit rating at risk. Zarisha Bradley, QUT News. The big issue is 20 years old today. The magazine's anniversary edition includes an extra 28 pages, highlighting key achievements over the past two decades. It was all business for Lord Mayor Graham Quirk this morning, but not business as usual. Big issue, 20th year edition. The Lord Mayor and his co-worker Kevin hit Brisbane streets, selling the big issue. Also lending a hand, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull in South Australia. 20 years for the big issue, yep. great value at $7, been going for 20 years and Russell it's a big part of your life. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to you. The Lord Mayor says it was a great experience. This is an opportunity to, to join with people like Kevin to uh, make sure that, that they are a welcoming uh, part of this city and uh, it's great to be able to get out and experience what they experience every day. Kevin says it's an opportunity to be a part of the community. It means a lot. I mean, I, I, I'd rather be out and about meeting people than staying home and um, having nothing to do. More than 550 people sell the big issue across the nation, including 55 here in Brisbane, Ipswich, Logan and the Sunshine Coast. More than 10 million copies have been sold in Australia in the last 20 years. Kira Wallace, QUT News. And Movie World turned 25 today. Tweety Bird, Bugs Bunny and a host of superheroes and Hollywood stars turned out to wish the theme park a happy birthday. With more than 415 acres of fun and 18 super fast roller coasters, the fun is still going strong. Movie World has welcomed more than 20 million visitors since opening in 1991. Fans, old and new, celebrating the birthday extravaganza. Happy birthday, dear Movie World. From timeless favourites like Wild West Falls to more recent additions including The Lethal Weapon, Movie World continues to attract all the stars. All the characters around, all the shows are happening. It's a whole lot of fun, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Supervillains are set to take over Movie World later this year, announcing their two new multi-million dollar attractions for October. The Doomsday Destroyer and Supervillains Unleashed are sure to have stomachs churning. Today's really special for us. It's our 25 year anniversary. Um, that means 25 years of us bringing a lot of fun and a lot of great memories to families all over the Gold Coast and from interstate and overseas. The theme park will continue its year-long celebration into 2017 in true Hollywood style. Samantha Cheney, QT News. Nick Kyrgios has pulled out of the running for a spot in Australia's Rio Olympics team. The polarising world number 19 says he's received unfair and unjust treatment from the Australian Olympic Committee. He says he has been publicly and privately disparaged by the organisation. Tennis Australia is backing his decision, saying the AOC put him in a bad position. But Australia's chef de mission, Kitty Chiller, says every athlete has been treated equally and fairly. Kyrgios says he was extremely disappointed to have to make the decision, but hopes he can compete at the next Olympics. Now, the final of our three special reports on QUT's new Creative Industries precinct. And tonight, we look at how the space measures up for those who use it every day, the students and teachers. 
three separate faculties have now become one, with drama, dance and music under the same roof for the first time. It's probably the best um, facility of its kind in the world and I don't think there's anything like it anywhere else. Music facilities once spread across the university and Newstead are now all on the same floor. Staff welcome the fact that the new facilities allow them to innovate in terms of curriculum. It's like an animal or something! Drama facilities were also scattered at the Kelvin Grove and the Gardens Point campuses. What did I miss? We've always worked in kind of band-aided facilities before um, where people have created rooms for us but they were not rooms in which we could teach our art form. The open plan design of CIP2 is creating stronger working connections between staff and their students. I think that um, now this really lifts the benchmark in terms of international world-class facilities. And it has staff and students leaping with excitement. It's like, yay, hallelujah, we're finally, <laughs> we're finally in the building. It's an amazing, really, really an amazing space. And we're very grateful to be in such a world-class facility. Each faculty had input into CIP2's final design, from the bar design in the studios to the texture of the floors. The studios are currently being connected via Ethernet. A huge amount of interconnectivity and... Uh, options to record very large ensembles. This new level of technology and connectivity means I could be playing the piano here in this studio, while Alicia accompanies me here in this studio. These new facilities are music to the students' ears. It's amazing, so the studio floors, they're sprung, so they're really good for absorbing our jumps and things. It's just really nice being in a professional environment and being in a professional studio. They're beautifully acoustic, they're just a breeze. CIP2 reunites once three separate hubs of learning into one big creative community. I think John got it all. Adriana Majeros, QUT News. Good evening. As you heard earlier, parts of Queensland will be in for some wild weather this weekend. So take care on the roads and stay indoors if possible. Around the southeast today, showers started to set in for Brisbane. Similar conditions on both coasts, Ipswich 11 degrees overnight, up to a top of 24. Interstate tomorrow, expect a wet day in Sydney and Canberra. And for those who finally made it to foggy Melbourne, a top of 16. 18 in Adelaide, a top of 19 for Perth, and Darwin goes 5 for 5 with another top of 34 degrees. Back to Queensland, Mount Isa should be sunny tomorrow with a top of 21 degrees. 29 in Cairns, a shower or two for Townsville. Rain should be clearing for Mackay and Rockhampton, Longreach a top of 21. Finally, the three-day outlook for Brisbane, Storms and strong winds predicted for tomorrow. The wild weather could continue across Sunday, but should start easing by Monday with a top of 21. That brings you up to date with the weather. That's all the web news we have for tonight and for this semester. We're back next semester with more QUT News. From all the news team, good night. Good night.